Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'ar Habati fillah There is no shortage of knowledge about what's happening to our brothers and sisters, the Rohingya, in Myanmar, in other places. And likewise, our brothers and sisters going through severe oppression and a total wiping out and decimation of their Islamic identity. And this is in the situation of our brothers and sisters in China. Through the Chinese new re-education policy, which is a policy, in fact, to destroy the people's Islam without any question under the guise of fighting terrorism. And I just wanted to remind myself and my brothers and sisters on some of the ways and one of the most important ways that we can deal with this as a community because without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help, all of your weapons, all of your protests, all of your petitionings for the UN and others to intervene and and so on and so forth and boycotts will have no avail without your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so one of the most important, if not the most important weapon of the believer is to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we know that Ahl takfir Ahl tafjir and the people who love and espouse violence, they, they don't like that. And that might, for them, be just too much compromise. However, if we look at the Minhaj Rabbani, and this is what the Salaf were upon, and this is what Ahlul Sunnah is vigilant about adhering to the Minhaj Rabbani, let's look at how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam gave us a prescription to deal with or warning his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, in the ummah, in fact, about the danger of oppression and what can be a cause for overturning oppression. Listen to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, which gives us the minhaj rabbani and shows us that we need to increase our supplications and our ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah removes the harm and repels the wickedness of the people of shirk and kufr and who espouse an evil ideology and wish to destroy the Muslims and are killing and raping and doing such. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lamma ba'atha mu'adha the Yemen. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said mu'adha the Yemen. And Yemen at that time was a people of Ahl al-Kitab meaning the Jews and the Christian, the Prophet ﷺ said, in the min ahla kitab. Verily, you're going to be sent to the people of Ahl Kitab. You're going to be sent to the Jews and the Christians. The first thing that you're going to deal with and how you're going to give them dawah in order to reform themselves and reform their society is calling them back to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, to the shahada. Bearing witness that there's no God worthy of worship except the law. And that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the last prophet and messenger. The shahid of mentioning this hadith, in the last part of the hadith, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned about the duties they would have to perform, which were the pillars of Islam. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about sadaqah, or really zakat. He said, 
تخذ من أغنيائهم فترد على فقرائهم فإنهم أتاعوك لذلك فإياك وكرائم أموالهم واتقوا الدعوة مذلوم فإنه ليس بينها وبين الله حجاب أخرجاه meaning this is in Bukhari and Muslim so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم this was a situation of da'wah and he mentioned that when taking the charity that you have to dispense justice you shouldn't take from the best of their wealth and you shouldn't take in the their wealth which is um, which is unbefitting or the, the worst of their wealth but you should be in the middle but the best their most prized wealth in possession especially when it comes to animals and paying the zakat uh, you know, it has more, it may have more value. So you shouldn't take from their best of their wealth, but be in the middle. And he linked that with the next statement. He then said, because this may in, uh, be a type of oppression if you do go, he said, And then he said, Beware of the supplication of the oppression, of the oppressor, of the oppressed. He said, Because between that supplication and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no barrier. There's nothing that restricts the da'wah of the oppression. Now, what uh, the, 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 the dua, the supplication of the oppressed. Now, look at this. There's a couple of things we can look at in this hadith which can give us the tojihat and, and give us some lessons with regards to our situation. For one, the Prophet ﷺ was talking to us, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, the best of this ummah radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. And he was telling them to deal with the non-Muslim people with justice. Then how much more so with the Muslim people? We're always ordered to be just. And that's a characteristic of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned that it was dua, that to fear the da'wah of Madlun, fear the supplication of the one who is oppressed. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't say, so that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, letting us know that that's a powerful weapon that those people who are oppressed can use and that we should use. And that that is the minhaj rabbani, that is the methodology uh, the divine methodology. He didn't, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, tell, you know, uh, that the way to deal with it, fear, they're boycotting. Not saying that boycotting isn't an effective thing. It helped to bring down uh, the oppression of South Africa and its wicked and racist policies towards the true owners of that land. And he didn't, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, go to uh, fear they're going to higher powers, you know, bigger, bigger states and empires. And he didn't even mention that they fear their rebellion and their revolution. But he said, fear the supplication of the oppressed, because that may be all that the oppressed have is supplication. And on top of that, who is a better, who is better to rely on than Allah Azza wa Jal in comparison to the UN, in comparison to others who are in positions of power who, who may not be concerned about the issue or have another maslaha that they're looking at or whatever the case may be. Instead, it's coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that sometimes all the believer has is the most powerful weapon and we know oppression is haram for all. And I wanted to mention and make this a lesson about oppression. Listen to another hadith. Those who oppress and torture people. And this is the chapter that Imam Muslim, uh, in his book Sahih Muslim, uh, He said, those who oppress and torture people, Bab, fil ladina yu'adhibun al-nas, 
the chapter of those who oppress the people. Urwa ibn Zubair reported that Hisham ibn ha uh, Hakim ibn Hizam radiallahu said that he happened to pass by some people in Syria. And look at Syria today, Wallah Mustan, who had been made to stand in the sun and olive oil was poured on their heads. So this was a type of oppression. And this would obviously burn them, especially in severe heat. He said, what is this? It was said, they are being punished for not paying the government dues on lands, basically taxes and fruit, uh, on fruits and land. He said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will torture those who torture people in this world. So it shows us, shows us Allah, the tahrim of torture, that this is impermissible, this is evil, and the people who do this in this life will warrant receiving that in the next, and their punishment, punishment will be even greater. So, as believers, we feel the pain of our brothers and sisters, and the best of the weapons that you have at your disposal is to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicate to him to remove those wicked devils who oppress our brothers and sisters. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said it was correct was from Allah, anything I said it was incorrect was for myself and the Shaytan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Nabi Muhammad.